Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Stephen King podcast. Woo-hoo. This time it's episode 59, closing right in on 60 here. Right yes. On. And I'm here with Lou. Hello. Yep. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Yes. And today we have a guest with us. Uh, we are talking to Jason Bremer, who was an extra on the 112263 miniseries or TV show. And he's going to tell us all about it, how it was to be on set and film some parts of uh, the JFK killing. That will be interesting. Mm -hmm. But let's uh, start with the news, because we have a lot of news this time. Welcome, welcome. Do not fear the door that lies before you. We will protect you. We are your guides, Hans and Lou, and we will give you the latest in Stephen King news. But before we do so, you must prove yourself worthy. You must open the door and join us in the death room. Yes. We do. It just seems to get bigger and longer every time we do one of these podcasts. So, yeah. as usual, we break it down into categories, and we're going to start off with the cinematic news first. And the first item up is that the adaptation that originally was assigned to Kerry Fukunaga for it is still going on and going forward. And they've already uh, Warner Brothers and New Line have already announced a release date of September eighteenth, twenty seventeen, which is not that long away, just a little over a year. So I don't know if they've started filming yet, but because I think there's still some casting going on as well. One thing we do know is that the original actor, Will Poter, who was tapped to play Pennywise, uh, replacing the iconic portrayal of that character done by Tim Curry, is not uh, part of the project anymore due to, due to the delay. And uh, now he has scheduling conflicts, so therefore he will not be playing Pennywise. And at this time we do not know who is going to be the new Pennywise so that shall be interesting to find out and as far as we know it's still the two uh, two film prospect that Fukunaga put forward and I really like that idea and I'm glad to hear that they're keeping that so it'll be interesting to see in just over a year from now uh, how troubled if this troubled production actually ends up turning out something good yeah i think they start shooting this summer so i don't think they have started yet right and i must say i'm i'm a bit disappointed that will isn't playing pennywise oh. i thought he was yeah i think it would have been great i, I mean okay. i think you've uh, changed your mind then didn't you or weren't you yeah kind of... I, I i think i was a bit more critical to him to begin with but yeah. the more i look at pictures of him i think he looks really scary yeah, I, I, I thought he was going to be uh, able to bring an interesting take to it. And like we've yeah, discussed, he, and people say, well, nobody can replace Tim Curry, but this is kind of the same thing that we we're going through with Heath Ledger and the Joker. Now we've got this Jared Leto doing this new take in the Suicide Squad, and we assume that Ben, new Ben Affleck Batman movie. Characters can be played by different actors, and you just you get different portrayals. And uh, I think yeah. a, a younger character like Will Poulter actually would have been really cool. So now it'll be interesting to see who they're going to get this time. Yeah. Yeah, and I think even if if you can't compete with Tim Curry, I think that if you do a remake, you, you definitely need to have a, a different actor. You can't have the same one. So um, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's it's a question of if you're going to have a different actor. I think you need a, need to have a different actor. And yeah. uh, I like that he looked so young and innocent, but still pretty evil. So yes. I, think, I think he could pull it off. Yeah. I mean, there's so many actors out there, so many good actors that could do this role. I mean, if you look at all the actors that are doing comic book movies and that now, any one of those younger actors could probably do a really good job of this. I kind of like yeah. uh, the, the guy that plays, is it Nicholas Holt? I think that plays the Beast in the X-Men movies. I think he has that, he could do that innocent look, at, but at the same time be evil as well. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see who they get for this role. Yeah. 
definitely. Okay, moving on. The cell or cell. Finally, things are happening. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a trailer. Have you watched it? Yo, yeah, a couple of times actually. And we have a poster, and we have a release date for the U.S. And the date is a bit confusing, I think. It says that the film we will get ultra vod, and I must say I'm a bit uncertain on what that is. But I think it's when you can download it or watch it, stream it online, right? Or maybe it's Netflix. Yeah. I know that they run like a you can subscribe to two versions. One's like a, a regular version, the other one's a higher quality version. So maybe that's something ah, okay. of what they're doing. Yeah, because there's like a $10 version of Netflix and then there's a $12 version, which I guess gives you slightly better video and audio quality. So maybe that's what they're doing um, here. But I would say like on Netflix, it would be out on July 8th or something like that. So yeah, unfortunately, I unless you live in a ma- major American city, I, I, I doubt that, or Canadian city, I doubt that you're going to be able to see this. And it'll probably be in and out of the theaters. Yeah. Uh, what then, what did then, you think of the trailer? Well, it looked it, it looked quite good, but it, it looked different from one I, what I was expecting it to, do, to look like. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was quite some time since I read the book. I read it when it, it was released. Right. So I have actually started to listen to the audio version of it now. Oh, okay. And I'm about halfway through. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it will be a, a bit different. It's, it's hard to say, but I get the feeling that the character played by Samuel L. Jackson mm-hmm. can't remember his name now, but doesn't matter. In the book, he's very small, very uh, gentle, and yep. in the, in this movie, he seems like more hardcore. So I think they might have yep. changed that a little bit. Yeah. So I get the feeling that they are tending to get it more like a, a zombie killing movie than yeah it, uh, than what the book really is it definitely has a um a walking dead vibe to it yeah more than uh i would have liked but the, the most distracting thing for me <laughs> this is going to be one of those silly silly <laughs> things that you know somebody's not even going to pick up on is but it's actually john cusack's hair it just the way it flows back now. It so it looks really stiff. It almost looks like a wig or something like that. It almost looks like a fright wig. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> his his hair is not working for me in this movie. <laughs> and I know it's a silly thing, but because I, I, that's the way he's combed his hair for a long time, right? But it just looks something about it. Just looks very, I don't know, fake. I don't know what to say. Maybe he's actually gone bald and he's just gone to this wig or something. I don't know. I don't think he has, but just the way it's <laughs> shot in the film, it looks it looks fake to me. And it, every time I see him, I just it takes me out of the picture because I said this doesn't look like. Yeah, you know, maybe he's just getting older. I guess he's getting older, obviously, but it just doesn't look like him anymore. It looks it looks artificial. Like I don't know how to, what to say, but and it takes me out of the scenes all the time because I'm looking at his hair and I says his hair is not lying the way it used to when he was younger. <laughs> now now we have started a rumor that John yeah. Cusick is actually bald and starting to wear a wig. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't say I picked up on that one exactly. But Okay, well, you watch it again and then watch yeah, the, I, like I 1408. I, I'm sure I will, will react on it the next time I see it. Again, I, I have to bring this up. As, uh, I like John Cusack. I think he's a really good actor. But he's gotten into that territory with is it Andrew Webb I think that did all the Stephen King miniseries yeah. he was in the, or Mark Webb whatever the guy from Wings and a funny thing Tim Daly who was his co-star in that series is also in a couple of King things but yeah. he's it's getting to the point where he's done too many King adaptations and I think he should step aside from now on and let other actors do these projects because it's you get to a point where you get if you're a King fan and you see the same actor in multiple projects it takes something away from the project I don't do, do you have that yeah. do you know what I mean or yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. It's like it's like when Kathy Bates shows up in in the stand as that DJ, Jay, radio yeah. DJ. Yeah, you're you're expecting her to bring out the sledgehammer and <laughs> and crush those soldiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like that. It's it's a little different. I'd, like I didn't mind that because that's I think that's she's only done two things, right? So, but uh, he's John Cusack's yeah. done. Or has he only done one? He's only been in fourteen oh eight. Was he anything else? I, I think remember. he had a part in Stand by Me, right? Yes, 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 you're right. That was more of a yeah. cameo, but but yeah. after this, I, I think he needs to step aside and let other yeah, actors take I these agree. roles because uh, there's some so there's a familiarity kind of problem that I'm starting to have seeing him in these Stephen King roles. So And Samuel Jackson, well, he's in every movie pretty well, so <laughs> I'm yeah. surprised he wasn't in Civil War, to be honest. But yeah, <laughs> I, I just think that those two actors together, I've seen them too much in other yeah. things, yeah. and it's, that's the thing that's killing for me. And I also took a little bit of a 
internet tour was always a bad thing to do. But to see, because people, one of the big things, I don't know if you would do this like on YouTube, but people now are doing like reaction tra- uh, trailers to, or videos to yeah. trailers. And a lot of people watched the cell trailer and they, they were starting, they were laughing, like especially younger people. They, they thought it would look silly and stupid. So I don't know. That's uh, okay. kind of got me a little bit worried too, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it will be interesting to see now that this will finally be be uh, released. I don't know how long it's been done, uh, but it, it must Over be at least a year, a year or, or <laughs> yeah. a year and a half maybe. Yeah. So, and that's never a good sign that it's laying on the shelf for that long. So, but I guess yeah. we'll see in the Especially about... because it's so closely related to zombie stuff that in Walking Dead is so popular, you think it would really kind of be something that would grab a, yeah. a distributor's money pretty quickly, but I don't know. I mean, I, I actually like most of the trailer. I thought the stuff in the airport was pretty cool. Yeah. Some of the stuff out in the woods and that, like, that's when it started to feel like The Walking Dead. So I, I hope it's more urban stuff and less out in the outdoors kind of things, but we'll have to see what they do with it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. So slowly migrating from movies over into video, we have, and if you listen to our interview with Jason after this, we talked about this a little bit, that the 1122-63 Hulu miniseries is coming out on Blu-ray and DVD August 9th, and it will have some featurettes, including one with Stephen King, J.J. Abrams, the head writer of the of the miniseries. I think her first name's it's not Karen because it's like Karen Carpenter. Bri- Bri- Bridget. Bridget Carpenter. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say Karen Carpenter. She sang with a, a group. <laughs> 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 the Carpenters, right? And then James Franco. Yep. Hopefully, like it says featurette, which it could be like five minutes long. So I don't know how yeah. long. Unfortunately, with the move to streaming, the DVD, Blu-ray extras whole thing has really shrunk, yeah. which is unfortunate. And that seems, if we talk, when we get to talking about other releases, DVD releases, that you almost have to find a product that's solely about the behind the scenes making of a film, as opposed to getting the good additional stuff with the actual product itself, which is it's just kind of bad. I mean, or sad, I should say, because I remember, like, if you like the Lord of the Rings movie, uh, my goodness, the, the, the extras you got with that were just unbelievable but yeah. on the other hand not every movie needs to have like a, an extra dvd of behind the scenes content because some movies just aren't that deep right they're just yeah. time yeah, and it also so. depends on what what kind of behind the scenes yeah. i mean so, some of those are just silly when people go around and patting each other's backs telling how good everyone is that's yeah. not very interesting so i think yeah. if I, I i appreciate when they have behind the scenes stuff that really tells a story or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, not just people telling how good everyone else is. Yeah. Uh, and you can understand why nice. those don't come out very often because nobody wants to be made look bad either, right? So, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah those are the mo- usually the most interesting ones. Like the documentary for the making of Apocalypse Now, that's just a fascinating movie to watch on its own. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Moving on. And this is something that just popped out from nowhere. There's been rumors about a Pet Cemetery remake. And I've heard a lot about different scripts and stuff. In one, the daughter was a, a teenager, actually, and stuff like that. So now it seems that they are going to do a remake of Pet Cemetery, And the casting has begun. So I guess they will start shooting. don't think we know exactly when they will shoot it. But pretty soon, I guess, since they are casting it. So it will be interesting to see what they can do with this. I don't, I don't really know if we need a, diff- a, a remake of Pet Cemetery. No. Oh, 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 I, I totally disagree. <laughs> I, I think we, we definitely need a remake because I think, well, there's parts of the original that were good. I think as a whole, the movie doesn't hold together that well, especially the ending of it. So I'm I'm really looking forward to a, a remake of this. And it's been long enough, too, that like it's been over, what, 20 years since the original one came out. So I, I yeah. think this, this is a story that's timeless, like the monkey's paws. I think this is due for a remake. And... I would like to see, I mean, the, the original had some horrific parts to it, but I think it really needs to nail the last third of that movie, which is where, to me, the original falls apart. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this, if, if this is going forward, that this really does happen, because I, I do think this is one of those ones that's really overdue for a remake. I'm emboldened that Juan Carlos Frisinaldo, who has worked on 28 Weeks Later, is is on board to direct the script. So I, I have big hopes for this. I mean, there's parts of the original that are classic. I think Fred Gwynn as the the neighbor was uh, fantastic. Yeah. And of course, the cat in that movie was the scariest cat I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> but yeah, yeah the, the 
the movie falls apart for me once Gage is revived. And I'm really hoping that they can do uh, justice to that ending because that movie and story is, to me, this King's all-time creepiest book. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of that movie, I can mention also that uh, I got to see an early copy of Unearthed Untold, The Path to Pet Cemetery, which is a documentary in just under 100 minutes about the movie. And it's really interesting to see this one. It does what we wanted, want a behind-the-scenes movie to do. Mm-hmm. They are talking to everybody except Stephen King and the, the guy you mentioned, the neighbor. I don't, what's his Frank Wynn? Yeah, uh, because he's dead, so that would yeah. have been creepy if they would have talked to him. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, but otherwise, they talk to everybody, and they show behind the scenes, and it's really interesting. And it's being released later this year. So definitely, if you if you like the movie, or I would like to say even if you don't like the movie, this is an interesting documentary to watch. And it, it's interesting to see that there's so much saved from behind the scenes from this one, because this one is, I think it's... When, when was it released? Sometime uh, 80, 88, 89? 89, I think. Uh-huh. So it's it's really old, and it's before the DVDs. And on, on VHS cassette, you never had behind-the-scenes footage. So there was really no reason to do, to do behind-the-scenes when this was shot. And still there are a lot of stuff that they have managed to dig up. And, well, it, it's a great, great behind-the-scenes movie that I think you should check out if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, that's the one with the uh, special, like if you order it, pre-order it, you get like the, the, there's some additional extras with it too, right? Or is, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Have, have you seen those extras too? Or, or like did you, or do you have those extra? No, I don't. Okay. It was actually, the deal was that you could sign up for that DVD. Yes. And because it's it's going to be released, I think in October or something like that. Yes. But if you signed up and, and bought this extra package, Mm-hmm. Um, and if thousand persons did, they were going to do it and and uh, sell it. And if if less did, they they would just wait for the re- normal release in in October. Right. But the last thing I heard was that they were going to do this extra, no matter how many or how how few signed up for it. So this yeah. is going to happen. Yeah. Well, that's um, great because I did sign up for it because I thought the extras made it worth. Uh, yeah. Even the shipping costs, I still thought for you know even for that sh- extra additional shipping cost because if for, if like for you and me that don't live in the states, anything shipping out of the states is like the the cost is almost doubled. Yeah. But I, I still yeah. thought that the extras made it worth it. So. Yeah. So you're and gonna I, get it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's no great. That's good news. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, sliding into movies that are still in production, we've got a ton of Dark Tower posts and you can check them all out over at Han's site. We've got set photos from the some from the prop master. We've also got one from actress or actor Catherine Winnick who if you follow the TV series Vikings, she's been cast in the Dark Tower as well. We don't I'm not really I don't think we really know what her role is. I think she's the people helping out the the bad guys in this movie and she's it's, also it's, po- it's, it's interesting. Ahead. She posted a, a photo of, of when she covered her, her sign on the door where her, yep. her role's name was, and I definitely hope there's someone interesting's name behind those hands, because if they just say, <laughs> or something like that, someone we don't know, it's uh, it seems kind of lame to, to keep it a secret if, it, if, if it's not someone we know. Yeah, well... So I hope I hope they it doesn't come to that, because that would be a big letdown, I think. Yeah, well, if it's Susan Delgado, that would be very interesting. Yeah. But we'll we'll have to see. We also had some uh, other casting ma- announcements. A friend for Jake, Timmy, has been cast, which sounds like a totally new character because I don't remember Jake ever talking to any friends in any of the books. Well, nope. Fran Krantz is Pimley, the right hand of the Man in Black. So that's cool. He's he's a good actor, good character actor. So I'm sure he will do well in that part. Also, we got Claudia Kim has been cast as Era Champion, and she's. Um, she plays a character who are ambushed and she meets a pretty terrible end. So her casting probably raises more of a question mark than anything because th- this is really jumping around in the storyline, timeline of the story. So I'm not really sure how she fits in to this movie. Is she in the... F- like, I don't know if, the, if they're filming only one movie, which I think they are only filming one movie because I, I don't think they would film more than one until they get one under the belt and see how it does financially. So her being included in the first movie is really kind of confusing more than any of the other casting bits that I've heard. And the exclusion of 
casting news for Susanna and Eddie is also <laughs> yeah. raising question marks because I, I was getting uh, under the impression that they're not going to be in the first movies. But if they're not, then how can this actress be in the movie? Like it, unless they're doing some parts of Wizard and Towered. But I thought one of the producers of the movie said that they would probably leave Roland's backstory for a TV series. So um, it's, it's really sending out mixed signals about the casting here. I'm, I'm not really sure what to make of it. No, and and it's to say most of the casting we hear about is is minor roles. Yes. And the only big one we have is is Flag and Roland, and that also makes me think: Are those the only main characters we're going to see in this movie? Or we had some for Jake. I don't remember his name, but I, I'm not sure if that was actually confirmed or if that was just that it was in talks. That should suggest more than that they are filming the first book, mm -hmm. uh, which they have said they won't. <laughs> so it's it's strange. I don't yeah. know where they're going with this. Or it could be that they are holding back some of the characters and, and not revealing who will play them. Yeah. But yeah. I think that would have would have come out anyway. I think it's hard to to keep that a secret. Yes. And even like the because we've got some of the set photos, we've got pictures of prosthetics for what we're told are uh, demonic nuns. Yeah. Which, <laughs> again, this is this could be like, are, is this, are these supposed to be the sisters of Illyria kind of thing? Or, yeah. I don't know. And then they have pictures of two little girls. I guess they're playing villagers maybe or something like that. So, yeah. and there's, I don't know, they're showing, a, it looks like the picture into a, a mine or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah. And then they have this thing that looks like it's at the top of a water, water tower. It's really hard to get a bead on exactly what parts of the story they're filming with all these announcements. So it's maybe maybe they're just picking pieces from all, all, all of the books. I don't know. It's really tough to say. They're cramming all seven books into one movie. <laughs> that would be a mean <laughs> feat. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So no, I, uh, I get the feeling that some, some things because based on the casting is very specific and and might only be catching on on those who really know the book right uh, or the books and other things they are changing totally different from the book so i don't know exactly it, it's like it's some kind of mixed signals that on one hand they want to uh, make the the re the big fans happy and on the other hand they want to do a movie that fits everybody and i don't know it's like we're getting mixed signals here from what they really want to do but I guess we have to wait and see. We, we don't know yeah. more. One thing that uh, everyone who listens to this can do is keep their eyes out on social media because there have been photos on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook from the cast and people involved, like some of the props people and stuff like that. So there are clues out there. And so keep your eyes open. It's often hashtags, Dark Tower movie or stuff like that. So... Right. Keep on yeah. checking, and if you if you find something, feel free to send it in, and I will post it on on the website. Especially if they find a picture of Roland's guns, like that would be yes. Awesome. <laughs> yes. yes. And for the prop master, you can send them to me when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, moving on, and this news is also about a documentary. This one is about Creep Show, and it's called Just Desserts. Supposedly, this one has been out in the UK for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, I had never heard about it until it popped out a while ago with the fact that it was supposed to be released in the US. Right. So what we know now is that on July 12, it will be out in the US on Blu-ray. And it will be 90 minutes uh, with a lot of, a lot of extra material and behind the scenes and stuff that went on behind the, the shooting of Creepshow. So I think this this will definitely be a, a DVD, uh, sorry, a Blu-ray that I will be checking out. I think I think it will be a real joy to watch it. Yeah, even though most of the, the you can put most of the clips together off of YouTube, but those are poor quality VH clips, VHS yeah. tape clips. So I'm hoping that the transfer will really sharpen up the image on this because there's a lot of cool stuff on those clips that are out on YouTube and. I have to appreciate the fact that this seems to have a lot of extras with it, including at least it looks like two audio commentaries. I'm kind of hoping that there's some stuff with Stephen King filming his part. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, um, and I, I actually spoke to someone who had seen the UK version of this, and 
can't remember exactly what, but he mentioned that there was something here that wasn't on the UK version. So even if you have seen that one, there is supposedly some material here that that's new for this edition. Yeah. And as somebody was commenting that they were confused why they said director and editor Michael Felsher. And I think he's the producer of the documentary, not obviously George Romero was the director. So yeah, of the movie. Exactly. So I think that that's what they meant by that. So because he's he's the guy that I think I put up the all the YouTube clips as well. So he obviously has a wealth of material to talk and show about this behind the scenes look. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one too. Hopefully it's not going to be too expensive, but it says twenty four ninety five. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, hopefully it'll be available in Canada and, and other countries just beyond. So I, I just don't want to have to ship it from the states. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh... Um, yeah, and I, I think that I'm a, I'm a little bit old-fashioned that way, but I think it's it's nice to have everything in one place, and you can put it on your in your Blu-ray player, and and you don't have to click around and find different clips and yeah and uh, such online. So I think uh, this is definitely something that I will get, even even though it, it's possible to see it online. I, yes, I will definitely get yes, one. definitely, because the quality should be way much better. And like you said, it's all in one yeah. spot, and it's such yeah. an interesting movie. That's really a throwback to the Hammer horror pictures of the '60s, and that that it, uh, it's it's just worth getting this extra material to complement the movie. Yeah. Up next is more news about the Mist TV series that Hans has a couple of links up to. Spike TV has announced that Mists will be going into production this summer and air in 2017. I believe it's going to have 10 episodes. Yeah. There's also, if you know the movies at all the Weinsteins are behind this as well in, in collaboration with Spike TV so that's pretty good they're always the Weinsteins are, have a lot of projects uh, on their resume so it's always good to see some solid names behind this project and Adam Bernstein will serve as the director and executive producer which is great because he's done some really good TV work for such shows as Fargo, 30 Rock, Scrubs. He's also worked on Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, Californication, Entourage, Bored to Death, Shameless, Homicide, Life on the Street. So, And he's won an Emmy for 30 Rock as well. So great pedigree behind this TV sh- series. So I- I'm really excited f- to see what the, they're going to do with The Mist. Yeah, so at least next year we know that we're going to have It and The Dark Tower. Yes. And now The Mist. So at least on the cinema and TV front, there's going to be plenty of Stephen King. And hopefully we'll have some more surprises like adaptations of things like The Good Marriage and Big Driver. Yeah, it's positive that that originally uh, Spike had only ordered a pilot. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they change it for 10 episodes. So I, they, I think it says that they believe in this one for going full out with with a season for it. So I hope this will will turn out good. I think it has potential. Definitely. And moving on to the last news is that The Shining will be released in no less than two special editions. Mm. One is done by Cemetery Dance, and as we know, they are doing new edition of the, I think it's the sixth first book King released. And when they come to The Shining, they will include the prologue before the play. Uh, 40 new pages installed before the book in itself so you can read it in the right order that it was supposed to be so I think that is great that will definitely be interesting yeah. before the play was released in some I think it was the TV guide or something like that before oh, Okay. but I think that version was actually shortened a little bit so I think this is the, the first time you have it in as a, as a complete book so I think this, this will be good mm-hmm. and the other one is actually Something that I, I, I wasn't aware of this, but I, I got this sent from, from one of my readers. And that is that there's something called the Folio Society that are doing nice books about from famous authors' books. They take one, one book from one author, author I think. Mm-hmm. They are located in the UK. They are doing it in a nice special edition with a, what's it called when you put the book in it? A uh, slipcase. Yep. And it had new, have new illustrations from Edward Kinsella. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting about this book is that King will actually sign a couple of them. So they have one, if, if you don't want to buy anything from them, you can still sign up for a contest. And from that contest, they will draw... 10 winners who will get a signed copy. Oh, uh, sweet. And 
if you buy a book from them, any book, as far as I can tell, if you buy a copy of them, you will be entered in a different contest and there they will draw 100 books that will be signed by King. So you have two ways to, to enter the contest. Obviously the one, if you, if you buy a book, you will have a, depending on how many enters, but there will be more signed books that way. So there's a chance you can get the signed book. And even if you don't get a signed book, you get, you can buy the book with different illustrations and totally different binding and, and uh, everything like that. Cool. So yeah, there's two new versions of the, the Shining that you can get. Right. And the, the folio one, I, I, they're not showing as much of the artwork there, so I can't really con comment on the quality of it, but I'm, I'm looking at the one that Cemetery Dance has from Don Mates, and boy, oh boy, those are some beautiful illustrations, man. Jeez. Yeah. Know. Yep. Very colorful and lots of blood. <laughs> <laughs> and some, some of the very highlight moments from the book, just really well done. And boy, if they could get a, a, a kid actor that looks like the way this guy is illustrated, Danny, man, that would be, a, that would be fantastic. Because that is the spitting image of the kind of face that you would want on Danny for The Shining. Yeah. Man, yep. I just can't get over that. He, it's like almost like Norman Rockwell painting, except Stephen King style. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the kid's got the rosy yep. cheeks and everything, but he's got blood all over him or red paint or whatever. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah, man. And he's looking behind the curtain in room 217. Just fantastic stuff here. And the lion yeah. from the topiary maze. Yeah, it's just fantastic stuff here. Gorgeous book. Man, oh, man. Only problem is the money. You the money, the honey. Money. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right so that is another exhaustive list of news items this is great what's our job we'd like to drive around pick up stiffs or what it's time for reviews from the night shift hello everyone we have a special guest with us today jason bremer uh, hi jason how are you doing i'm doing great how are you guys doing Awesome, thank you. Fine. This is an extra feature that we're doing for 11.22.63, and appropriately, Jason happened to be an extra on 11.22.63. So uh, we thought it'd be interesting to get his perspective on his part in the series and how it came together from his experience as to what actually ended up being uh, televised. So Jason, uh, before we get into that, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Are you a Stephen King fan or you're interested in being an actor? Yes, Dan. And that's, well, I'm definitely uh, an inspiring actor. Mm -hmm. I would love to continue to pursue that. But I've always been a uh, Stephen King fan since I was a kid. I mean, it was more of collecting his books. And sometimes I wouldn't read the books. I would just have them on my bookshelf. <laughs> and I'm talking about all of them. I mean, just sitting there. Because okay. <laughs> as a kid, it, it could be there's they're huge right. books, even as an adult. Yes. So, so I've... I could consider myself a huge Stephen King fan. Okay. And how did the acting bug come about? Well, as a kid, we had a, let's see, we would actually uh, film some stuff on a small little camcorder. So even as a kid, it was fun to just kind of act, you know, for fun. Right. And uh, then, you know, I joined the military and I was actually involved in two theater plays. And it was, it was during that time that I was like, you know, it, this would be awesome if I can continue per, to pursue either theater acting or film acting, which as of right now, film acting is something I would definitely want to continue. Okay. And how did this opportunity come about? Well, it's funny. Uh, local to uh, Texas, there's a uh, local production company mm -hmm. that hires some of the extras. And my wife saw on the news that they were talking about this company. So I contacted them. And they put me on their list. You know, th this was a couple of years before um, 112263 started filming. Right. So they do more than just the 112263. So, um, so that's how it actually got started. Was just get on their list, and then they contact me. You know, a few times. So, so you have have done more more parts for them. Um, through this production company, yes, I've done two through them. Um, 112263 was the actual, I'm sorry, I know 112263 was my second opportunity. So I've done three of them through them. And then there was another small part, um, after 112263, about a month after filming ended. Okay. Did, did you have to, uh, do a, a tryout for this or, or how um, does it work? No, it, honestly, it, it, there's no trying out for it. Um, however, um, they, they select 
some people based on criteria what they're looking for um, for specific parts. And then they, you know, they bring you in and they fit you up, especially for this one. They fit you up to 1960s clothes. And they honestly, they told me that, hey, we're going to we can utilize you all week. We just don't know what at this point Mm -hmm. what you'd be doing. And they were like, are you okay with that? And of course, as a Stephen King fan, I would have gone down there to, you know, clean the bathrooms if they asked me, honestly. <laughs> right. And I think all of the Stephen King fans would have wanted at least to be down there to watch filming. So just yeah. to have the opportunity to do something on there was just, was, was great. Right. Did you hang around there for, for a week? And, and, or did oh it... yeah, it was, a, well, it's Monday through Friday. And honestly, it was exhausting. It was about 15 hour days. Mm. So it was tiring. The The shoes they gave me to wear the first two days was, they were ridiculous. It's like <laughs> they had put them in storage for since 1960. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and so I, at day three and day four, I wore my own shoes. And when I went back up there to get dressed again, I asked them if these shoes were okay. They were like, oh yeah, those are perfect. And the, the sole on them were, was was real thick, so it helped out a lot. The 15 hour days were, were much better. So, what was the time frame for like when when did you shoot these scenes? Um, let's see. This would have been the first week of October of 2015. Okay. So it it wasn't that long ago since um before they actually uh, had the first episode out. Yeah, quick turnaround. But on TV. Th- again, th- but this was actually all the, the scenes that were filmed in Dallas mm-hmm. was actually the very end of, of shooting. Okay. So all of it had already been done. Even the, the stuff that you believe is Dallas, when right. in reality it's not really Dallas, it's Canada, um, mm-hmm. was already shot. So. Right. Okay. So did you see any of the principal actors at all? Yeah, definitely. Uh, pretty much all the ones I've seen was uh, James Franco, uh, Sarah Gadden, um and also, I think the only other person I actually saw was Daniel Weber mm-hmm. down there. Um, I'm certain, and there was a rumor that Stephen King was out there. Um, <laughs> I don't know how true that one was, but right. I would like to believe that he was probably up on the sixth floor watching somewhere. Right. Um, but that was kind of, um, it wasn't really a disappointment, but I would have, you know, I would. it would have been so great if mm-hmm. he would just walked out and, and uh, approach people yeah. so i'm not i'm not 100 certain he was actually out there or not but the rumor was he was actually out in dallas that whole that about for a couple of days okay and did you get to talk to any of the principal actors at all or the only one i really did was james franco and i'm and i'm talking about very little and that was at <laughs> the end of it was like the end of thursday uh-huh. so at the very end of the um assassination scene part mm-hmm. um when his main um acting role was done I got to talk to him just for a, a little bit, and that was sitting on the grassy knoll, um, oh. kind of in between takes. Huh. So he he actually came out there. That's that's this is, it's pretty funny because I didn't realize it was him. Um, I sat down because again it's it's hot out. It's for, it's for in October. It was pretty hot. It was like 85. We're having to wear all these thick jackets and clothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I sat down there and I saw one person. I saw a female and another and another guy in a jack and then a hat and the glasses and it was not until he actually spoke that i realized it was james franco oh. watching and his uh assistant i guess was there and they were sitting down and she was actually reading the book 11 2063 um <laughs> while they were yeah it was just kind of unique but yeah she was down there reading it while he was eating uh, some food mm. <clears throat> and i can't even tell you what we were talking about it was more of you know of what was going on that day right. um I, it wasn't too much. It wasn't, he wasn't asking me how I was doing or anything. So mm-hmm. um, most of the week we didn't want to approach any of the, the, the core actors cause they were focused on their own thing. And sure. we wanted, we wanted to uh, allow them to do that. The rest of us, you know, we were just happy to be down there. Right. Did, did you get the chance to see when the, the other scenes were filmed? Really? The only scenes that I saw in Dallas was anything that was downtown Dallas. Uh, unfortunately I didn't get to see, the, the one scene that ha- I had the opportunity to probably see was when they were filming at um, Oswald's apartment mm-hmm. on um, West Neely Street. But however, I didn't have any part of that. So it would have been nice to go down there and see what they did down there. But anything that was downtown Dallas and along with JFK's speech in episode one, I got a funny story uh, about that, actually. <laughs> um, so you have James Franco walking into the convention center following the Morn Shield. 
and he sits down and you have JFK speaking and then they get up and leave. Mm-hmm. That was basically about two minutes on film itself. But that yeah. that scene right there took 15 hours. Oh, my God. Because wow. when he left there and he went to that guy where he had to get up and follow the Morn shield, that was somewhere else. That was in Canada. No, so okay. the, the part where it, it showed JFK and them sitting down in there, that took 15 hours. Wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, it was funny. It was, it, that was the very first day of, for me to film was that scene and watching it was, was great. They did a great job on that. Mm-hmm. But and then, then when it was over, I was like, wow, two, two minutes, you know, and wow, it was done. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's long days for sure. So, so, so you didn't, yeah. you filmed more scenes and were you there to watch that scene or were you part of that scene? That one I was there to film, but okay. honestly with everybody going, everything going on there and the way that they shot it, it was very hard to see mm-hmm. where I was. Right. Um, so I didn't even see myself, but if, you know, they didn't have that many extras. I mean, that's what that's part of the reason why it took us so long to film that scene mm-hmm. was because that they we had to fill in some certain areas of that auditorium and cheer for JFK. And then when they were done with that one, we moved to a different spot, cheered, and they all CGI'd it together. Right. Um, right. So <laughs> it, it was a, it was an interesting experience. But, you know, when I did watch it and it was possible to uh to, to see myself but i you know I'm, I'm watching this it was interesting to try to find myself but sure. this the story my, itself was great you know yeah. i didn't even need to do that honestly so i was just so into the story right so, yeah. if, so if someone watching this want to see you then where can they find you in this um definitely not that scene um unless <laughs> you want to pause it and zoom in somewhere um no, there's a there's a couple of good scenes and, and my my best one that i see myself in is the very last episode when um you have james franco and uh sarah running down um towards the sixth floor mm-hmm. and you see the babushka lady over there and it kind of goes slow motion i'm the 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 cameraman right there it really just shows me for three seconds right there <laughs> but just to see myself was, was pretty cool but it's more of the experience itself that i'm, I'm actually proud of sure. you know than yeah. actually seeing myself on there that that's one of the scenes. Another another scene was when um when Jake was spying on Oswald and Demoran Shield at the sixth floor as as Oswald's taking that envelope. I'm standing there smoking a cigarette next to the the stairs as Oswald's walking down. Um, it shows me for about thirty seconds, but again, unless you know who you're looking for, what you're looking for, you're not even focused on that part. Right. So, but it was fun. It was, and that's how it was all week. I mean. They they did a different scenes and then just the way they cut it, you know, I end up being probably in three three episodes total. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's it just they they cut them different. So it's it sure. kind of interesting trying to find myself because I was like I, I didn't know what to expect where where it would be at exactly. Okay. I figured the one the grassy knoll would be at the very end. That was that was pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, is that the one where you spent the most time at? I would say, yeah, the Grassy Knoll scene was the, uh, the it took the longest because it took them 30 different takes. I, I mean, I'm just guessing, mm-hmm. but it took a lot of takes and it was hot out there. Um, then, you know, the very beginning, the first 15 or 20 takes or so was they were filming the um, motorcade going down with no shots, no killing, nothing. It was like as if, you know, JFK lived. Right. Um, with no, absolutely no shots. And I don't know what happened to that. I don't know why they would do that. Um, and then, you know, the motorcade kept going underneath that underpass and mm-hmm. that was it. But that never actually made it into the film. You know, I, obviously at the very end, we, we see that um, a bullet gets shot and JFK uh, reacts to it. Right. And that's kind of what happened at the very the second half of that day was that part of it where they actually did have gunshots, which was very unique to say the least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, to actually experience what, that. What kind of instruction did you get? What you were supposed to do and where you stand? And... Very simple uh, instructions was to go from one side of the grassy knoll towards the very end and stand there and react to the gunshots, um, react to JFK when you do see him go around the corner. Um, they did give me the camera. They said, go ahead and, and um, take, pretend you're taking some photos of the event. Um, but that was the, the most tiring part of it actually was actually me having to react to the gunshots, like diving onto the grassy knoll, kind of um, 
crawl around so i'm trying to take some more photos um right. a lot of it you can't really see you can see as they're looking up the the sixth floor window you can unless i knew where i was standing so it's easy for me to spot me crawling around and going like that but <laughs> um that was the probably the most tiring and uh i would say rewarding um time there because i've always been um i always loved jfk and the whole event around it and always been interested in, in just studying that so just to be part of it and actually witness what it may have been like that day was pretty surreal. I guess yeah. that's got to be kind of eerie because um, you're you're a resident of Dallas, so I assume that you've been to this area before and maybe visited, oh yes, definitely or, yeah, and visited the repository and all that stuff. Um, honestly, just like everybody else, you know, you don't really visit your local stuff that often. But I right. did, I yeah. went there one time. Yeah, it always seems like that. Yeah, but uh. But I did. I went to the sixth floor museum the very first um, weekend I was here because um, I'm not. I wasn't born in Dallas, but right. um, but just to witness, I had to go down there and witness the. Uh, it's a museum now, so you can just you go on the sixth floor and you kind of witness, and it's kind of like a self guiding tour. Right. Um, but you know, I you don't get to witness the uh, uh, recreation of the events of 11 mm -hmm. um, and that's what made that day unique. Um, yeah. more than just witnessing the actual location of it, which in itself is, is very strange just to be down there. Is strange. Yeah. There was a, yeah, there was a clip on YouTube that I think me and Hans linked to at his site that was showing like the re repetitive parade of the cars around the, the plaza and whatnot and people ducking and yeah. reacting to the shots and all that. So it was kind of interesting, but it, it, yeah. it, it makes for a long day to be doing the same thing over and over again. I bet. Oh, it was um, it was exhausting. Um, they had to reset it, but you know, you, they never know where the camera is going to be exactly. So, for example, I'm diving on the grass and crawling around, and then when they call cut, there's somebody having to clean up um, people's clothing, including yeah. my pants that <laughs> had grass stains. Exactly. Um, yeah. But you never know how close you're going to get. But I mean, it was literally like a matter of seconds. There'd be somebody over there wiping my pants off and making it, having to reset, and that's how it was. You kind of have to just. I mean, it was. I mean, very close to 30 takes. I mean, I. I I'm just guessing, but it, it felt like that, and especially after, you know, the first, I would say the first 10 times was, was awesome, but after that, I was like, okay, let's let's get this over with, but they have to do different <laughs> angles. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, did you, uh, when you found out you were going to be be an extra in this, or, or had you already read the book, or is this just the, one of the ones that oh. you like to have on your shelf and look at? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, I say that as a kid, you know, I've, sure. I have read a lot of the, the books now, and and I have when eleven twenty two sixty three actually came out, I bought it and mm -hmm. I actually read it. I read yeah. it one time and it was because again I love JFK, right. I love Stephen King, and I love time travel. So when you put them all together, it, to me it was the perfect book. Right. And that, in my head, that's what I was thinking it was going to be the perfect book. So I did read it, and right before we actually filmed, when I already knew I was going to have part of it, I listened to the audio book, yeah. and I'm glad I did because. Craig Wasson does an outstanding job yes. um, with the audiobook. So I don't know if you guys haven't haven't actually listened to it. I um, it says. Yeah, yeah it's, I, did. It's, I did just before. He does, he does a great uh, he did a great job. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know I know you got some uh, JFK pins. We have talked about them earlier and stuff. What what else did they make you look like? From, you were from the sixties. Did you, your clothes and the camera and um, stuff like that? The camera is, it's all props. The clothing was all props. And that's what, there's a big warehouse full of old clothing that you go over there and they, you know, get, get your measurements. And then that's, that, it, that took a good uh, hour and a half probably just to get dressed in like three different outfits. Mm -hmm. um, but that was my very first um, experience with doing something like that. Because normally uh, if, if you get a part, you know, as a background or an extra you can bring your own clothing normally and they just have to prove of it when they, when they see you, but something like this, they have to provide. Um, so that was pretty fun. The pins they, they gave us, you know, the first day of shooting, you have to make sure your hair looks right. So they do offer, uh, haircuts, which I did. I had to get uh, a haircut and then in the morning they, they put a bunch of stuff in it and then they comb it. So, you know, it's, it's hard like a helmet. It doesn't even move. So. <laughs> So after 15 hours, my hair was still like in place. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of roll cream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so. it's in, it's interesting with with all those props. I think I, I did an interview with uh, Jim Murray, who was uh, mm -hmm. the head chef of everything, 
uh, and he had responsible for everything any actor touched. So wow. he, he, he had a lot of stuff and, and you can imagine he had something to do with what you were using and wearing and stuff like that as well. Oh yeah, they want to make sure that even somebody that may not even be on, on the film, uh, that's what's interesting about it. They don't even know 100% if you're going to make it on film or not. They don't know if the camera is going to pass you or not, but you have to be ready. And yeah. that's what the tiresome part about somebody like him that would have to do that. Um, yeah. I would have loved to grab some more props, you know, but however, like, for example, like the camera, for example, I had to give them my driver's license. So <laughs> yeah. to get it back, you better give your the camera back. So that's how most of the props were was, you know, you have to give your, you know, life and soul away to, to grab it. And then right. um, you get it back once you turn it back in. So, so was, was the camera was the camera a working camera or? Oh, no, no, not at all. Oh. Um, it definitely is an old vintage camera. But, yeah, I mean, as long as I made, I was able to push the button and it made a clicking sound. So it, oh, it okay. felt like it was a working one. But, no, it, it didn't even have film in it. Yeah, you, you can always get a new driver's license, right? <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> hey, but, Hans, you know, after seeing what, what you got provided with those pins and stuff, those are the yeah. props that I would – Looking back now, man, those are the ones that are awesome. So I, I did see that you that you were able to get those pins, um, that, and that's great. Yeah, I was lucky to get the, those that yeah. uh, James Frank wore. No, that's uh, awesome. That's 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 great, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. is there anything else about your experience that we haven't asked you about that you wanted to mention, or not really? I mean, when it comes to experience, I think we've covered a lot of it. Really, it, again, it was uh, it was a fun time. It's 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 long hours and tiresome, but it's not. To me, I enjoyed every minute of it. If I could do it over again, I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, the series itself, I was already interested in watching this before I had any part in, into it. Because I did i did hear that they were filming this already before I knew anything about right. it coming to Dallas. And so I was very interested in it because, again, the book to me was, in my opinion, is one of uh, Stephen King's best. But again... I think it helps that I'm 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 a huge time travel uh, freak. But if you could say mm -hmm. that when it comes to the stories and movies and stuff like that, so but they did an outstanding job on on this, and I'm glad Hulu picked it up. And I just hope uh, that people um, support Hulu and and Warner Brothers Television pick up the DVD and, and Blu-ray when it comes out because I really think that if it does successful, that maybe they'll do more Stephen King uh, miniseries. Yeah. I would love to see that. Absolutely. You know, and I think one of the way to, to help them out is to do that, you know, to get Hulu, which I did. I never had Hulu up until this came out. And I love now that um, I'm not getting paid by Hulu to say this at all, but <laughs> now I'm not at all. Maybe but, you, you know, be. I got it for the show. I know. <laughs> no, but I, I got it for the show. And the idea was I was going to watch it and, and then um, just get rid of Hulu. Mm. Um, no, I, I, you know, I love it. Yeah. So yeah. Great. It, it turned yeah. out to be good for myself. So yeah, yeah. Like me and Hans have talked about that. We're really hoping now with this opening up of this new um, avenue for uh, entertainment with all the streaming services and that, that more of, you know, what people consider his lesser works would also get translated to these kind of miniseries because a, a lot of his books, because they're so long, would work better as miniseries as opposed to movies. So yeah, we're really excited about this too, and uh, we were glad to have the time to talk to you about it. Um, what, what were the other projects that you worked on, um, the other two that you mentioned? Well, the only other one that's coming out, again, there's no date onto it, is a movie called LBJ. And it's um, oh. Lyndon Baines Johnson is the president in um, the United States. I see and, a theme uh, in your work. <laughs> well, you know, it, when you when you live in Dallas, it, 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 that's what's funny about this is actually it, within a matter of months, they had the same uh, assassination scene back to back. And, and I actually had a part in that oh. however in this in this part i played a secret service agent oh, cool. roy kellerman wow. and uh he was actually in the motorcade the car that jfk got killed he was in the very front passenger seat oh so and uh cool. so i got to experience this pretty much the same thing i did on 11 63 but however i got to experience it in the car oh cool <laughs> which was very very unique and pretty scary at first you know you right. don't know how what to expect in the but when he when the bullets you know get shot and the driver has to drive fast you don't expect that i'm, I'm gripping onto the dashboard like i'm gonna fall out of the thing right but uh that's okay. the i don't even there's no date on that one but again that one's called lbj and that one will be going to theaters 
oh, um, okay. sometime this year. Oh. And it was uh, Rob Reiner was the uh, director, so I got to meet ah. Rob Reiner. Another Stephen um, King cool. connection. <laughs> exactly, and that's and that was the main thing. I was like, oh, it was so great, you know, yeah. to meet him because I love I love Stand by Me and Misery. Um, yeah, that's in Misery. Yeah, exactly. Those those two uh, movies, in my opinion, are, are great. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Do you have anything else, Hans? You wanted to ask? Yeah, I want to ask you: Do you, as an extra, get credit in the in the in the movie, TV shows at the end of the show? Um, it depends. Uh, however, um, I think they were very selective with the extras on 112263. So I didn't expect to get any, any credit uh, or anything like that. Um, and if you watch it, um, I'm not on the credits or anything. So they were very selective with the extras since you know I think if it was more of a movie. Uh, the, the credits would be longer and they'd have, you know, different credits to put in there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but, but the, again, it would be fun to, to, you know, to say, hey, there's my name on the credits. But, you know, that it's it doesn't affect anything that I do or anything. So, right. no, but I, no, I, you can always say you've been in, in the Stephen King adaptation. And that's, an, you know, and that, yeah. that's the first thing that I thought of. I was telling my uh, my brother, who's another uh, Stephen King fan, and I told him, hey, man, this is going to be great. I got a part in um, a Stephen King movie and he was jealous because we both were like, that's going to be great. I mean, even if, and again, it turned out to be, you know, maybe a uh, 30 seconds total film that I was in, but just to think or tell myself, Hey man, I'm part of some type of Stephen King history. I thought that was great. And I thought right. that's very cool. All right. Did, uh, yeah, it is. If I, if I remember correctly, did you not blog about your experiences as well? Or put up um, some, some posts on the internet about it or maybe on, no, I don't think me, but some I did get interviewed by. Oh, okay, maybe that's by, what it was. Uh, somebody yeah. that runs a uh, yeah, and it, and they they had some questions for me, and, and uh, we kind of did that, and he okay. put on his uh, website, and I think I did. I posted it on my Facebook page. I just as a uh, link. Oh, okay, cool. So if people want to yeah. see what you look like, so they can have a better chance of spotting you, they should go to your Facebook page. Yeah, just it's Jason Bremer. It's it's pretty easy to to spot me on there. Yeah. There's a couple of them out there, but. I, it's pretty easy to see. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and you're active in the, the all things King, is it right on Facebook yes. as well? Yeah. Yes. And that that's I recommend if you love Stephen King, go in there because I think there's no uh, there's no BS there. Um, and, and they it's a, just a bunch of King fans put together, you know, and mm -hmm. you can all feel like you're normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Tell us about it. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I think that's all I got. Uh, I want to thank you very much, Jason. Uh, Hans, yes. did you have anything further you wanted to? No, I'm I'm good. It was okay. very interesting to talk to you, and it it's, it's fun to hear things behind the scene, how it works. Uh, it's so much that you don't know when you just watch the the thing on TV. So it's, it's oh yeah, it's great to yeah. Get there's a, a there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that don't kind of play at the yeah. end, but it it was great to experience that. So. Well, I appreciate Hans and Lou. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to come on your guys' show. It was great. Well, it's yeah. it's an opportunity for us to live vicariously through you because we would love to do something like what you did as well. So, uh, yeah, we're, and, we're envious. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you guys say that because you know I I had fun, yeah. but I would I would love it if more Stephen King fans would love would would have the opportunity to do anything sure. like this. Yeah. Um, I would love for you guys to to be able to do that. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully in the future that would happen. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. And you can always say, it, not only did you start or were you in a Stephen King movie, but you made it out alive. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know when you be when your big break comes, you know where you're gonna go first to get an interview. <laughs> oh you, that, right. definitely. And yeah. you guys would have that chance. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Looking forward right, Jason, to it. Thank you very much. Well, okay. thanks guys. Appreciate it very much. Take thank care. You. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs> what do we got planned for the next podcast, Hans? Are we still up in the air? or? Yeah, I think we're up in the air. Okay. So, uh, if any, anyone have any suggestions, you can send them in, and maybe we'll do them. Mm -hmm. Might be able to do... Uh, when does Joe Hill's book come out? Is that... It's coming out this, this coming week now, as we record this, uh, yeah, May so... 17th. It might be a bit too early to review it in our next podcast. Maybe the podcast after. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we're, we're open for ideas. Uh, we're looking at uh, the Dead Zone. Next one on the Stephen King Revisited checklist. So we might end up doing just doing a Dead Zone themed episode. It's been a while since we talked about that. Yeah. Before we go, I got one thing more I have to say. 
if if you go over to my site, I have now since since Lilia, Lilia's library is turning twenty this year, we're going to celebrate that in in a spectacular way. And one of the things I do is that I ask uh, all of you readers to send in a photo of yourself and Lilia's library, and that can be in any way you want. I have I have some photos of people taking a, uh, like a selfie with computer screen with the site up. I have someone with the, the Lilias Library book. I have one who cut in his own face in the comic strip where Lilias Library was mentioned and so on and so on. I even draw a, a painting of Marv, the Lilias Library mascot. Oh, cool. So you can do it anyway. And I want to have a lot of photos in here. Of, of all the photos that are sent in, I will pick one winner. And this will not be based on on how nice your photo is. I will just draw one on random. So you don't have to worry about not, not having the best picture. I will draw one on random. And I will give the winner a prize. I can't reveal what the prize is because it's still a secret. But I, I can tell you this, that you will want this prize. <laughs> yes. Uh, how long is that so running for? Those... That one is actually running all year. Oh, all year. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it, it will be a while until until I will actually pick a winner, but I will hopefully be able to tell you what the prize is uh, later oh, okay. on before, before the year is over. But send in your photo right now. I will also mention that I have just last week gotten the OK for two other contests. Wow. Uh, one that will probably be running when this podcast is out or very close to that. And one that I am really excited about, and, and that is also a prize, or the prizes are very good in, in all contests, but this other prize for this contest that will run in July, I think, uh, mm. this is definitely a prize you will want as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm very happy that I scored these uh, prizes awesome. uh, to be able to offer them to all of my readers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't say much more about, well, I could, but I won't say any more about them now. Right. We'll have to wait. Right. So keep an eye out on the yeah. site. So, okay, come on, guys. We have to have a carrot out there for, to keep you listening, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep coming to Hans' site. So there you go. You want to? You don't yep. want to miss the next couple of months or the rest of the uh, the rest of 2016 on Hans' podcast yes. and site so, for yeah. the 20th anniversary. Yeah, there will be a lot of things happening. Mm -hmm. I got to start yep. taking some pictures. Boy, there's some pretty inventive yes. ones there. I like the guy when the guy put Marv on his face. I don't know how he did that, but uh... yeah, I think he used that face swap app. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. It's 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 really scary with those teeth yeah. running up from his eyes and down. So yeah, I, yeah that's, that's really <laughs> creepy. Yeah, yeah, yep. Good stuff, uh, folks. Keep sending them in. Yes. All right. So okay, we are done for this episode. Yeah, so why don't you take us out? Yeah, tell us what you want to want us to talk about in the next episode on Facebook or email or drum rolls or however you want to tell us. But until next time, stay safe. But stay scared. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>